watching Chasing Green and today we're talking about merino wool versus synthetic. So I'll do a lot of hunting and fishing and last winter we had one of the coldest winters I've ever experienced. We had several single digit mornings with wind chills below zero. We don't get that kind of cold here in the south a whole lot. So after all that was said and done I really started thinking about base layers. Really just warm clothes in general. I mean I stayed warm. It's really hard for me to get cold. I love winter. I love cold weather but it just got me to thinking maybe there's something more to base layers than what I've always used. Uh, I've always ran th synthetics, and just to be honest, I've always ran Under Armour. I started doing a lot of research. I started watching videos, looking into the forums, but I started to notice in all this stuff that Merino Wool is a big player in the base layers. I'd never even heard of Merino Wool till last season. I didn't know that it was even a thing. I just always thought that synthetics was what was used for base layers. I seen that Sika made their base layers out of Merino Wool, uh, First Light, a lot of companies had merino wool base layers. So out of all these research that I was doing, there were certain names that kept popping up in the merino wool area. Minus 33 was one of them, First Light. Um, there were a couple companies, but Minus 33 and First Light were probably the most recommended. So I reached out to Minus 33. I was like, hey, I really wanna see how merino wool how merino wool does in the hunting and fishing area, how it does in the waterfowl. They were interested in what I was trying to figure out, so they sent me their midweight top and bottom merino wool base layers free of charge to do a review and to see how they fared against synthetic. So I wore these for a complete season. I got them in about mid to late October and it's now late February and I've worn them all kinds of hunting and fishing and just general everyday comfort. What we got right here is the Under Armour 2.0 top and bottom and then we have the minus 33 midweight top and bottom so they're similar they're kind of like the same thing the 2.0 kind of compares to the midweight so today we're going to put these two against each other in a series of tests so the first test we're going to do today is something i ain't done in a long time and that's run so even though i've owned both these garments for a while now this is the first time i've ever really held them side by side and compared them first impressions i have while holding these two garments side by side and looking at them is how they're kind of put together as you can see this This one, it's knitted in these squares, and you can see the, the holes through it. Merino wool, on the other hand, is see-through as well, but just in a different design. First up is the Under Armour. <laughs> so I can tell you right off the bat, after putting the Under Armour on, I'm way warmer than I was in just the cotton t-shirt. I can tell already that this is about to be really hot. I'm going to do the Under Armour first and the minus 33 second. I'm going to run a half mile and then sit for 15 minutes and hopefully see how well each garment wicks away the moisture or if the sweat just kind of sits there. You guys better know that I love you because this is probably about to kill me. Hopefully we don't pull anything. Let's get started. Full disclosure, I didn't make it the whole half mile. Woo! So now I got on the minus 33. So the first thing I noticed when going from the synthetic to the merino wool is that the merino wool is way more comfortable. I think that's mainly to do with that synthetics typically like real tight to the skin, like a second skin really, it's like skin tight. Whereas the merino wool's next to the skin but it's not so tight on you. It feels way better to me and the material just feels way better. As far as warmth goes, I really can't tell this yet. It kind of feels almost the same. I was pretty warm in that Under Armour, I know. And I'm pretty warm right now. So let's try to hit a second run. bad that time honestly brought the stick for cougars bears tigers whatever may try to chase a man running down a wooded road paranoid maybe prepared absolutely so the running thing was a bad idea just on the first two impressions out of after having the under armor and the minus 33 on i felt like the under armor was more breathable and would wick better that was just my gut feeling from having it on but i felt like the minus 33 was warmer and more comfortable but that was a terrible test on to the second one all right what we got here is the minus 33 laid over a dixie cup with a rubber band wrapped around it highly scientific we're going to take three drops of water lay it on the garment and see how it interacts with the fabric we're going to rub it in with this to simulate your skin rubbing against the garment
Drop. <laughs> Just drop. <laughs> Draw off the water on the inside. This is the outside now. I just wanted to see what it was like on the other side. You can definitely see where it was. Definitely wet. Not really sure what that means, but we're about to see what it does on the Under Armour. Wow. Gotta be honest with you, I didn't expect that. There's definitely some dog hairs and stuff in this garment. <laughs> um, really didn't expect the water to just sit there in the Under Armour, to be honest with you. It like will not absorb into it. I think it's going through the little squares that are in it, but I'm not 100% sure. This is the other side of the garment and it's not really wet at all. There's like one little damp spot. I think what's going on is that it will absorb through those squares, through the thinner parts, but not through the thicker parts. Not really sure what that means as far, let's pour a little more water on it and see what happens. As you can see, the water is just pulled up. Not really sure what that means as far as your sweat. But I gotta imagine that your sweat's not going through there very good. Now, I don't know that. Even with me rubbing the water in there, it's still not really going through. Yeah, it's not really wet on the other side hardly at all. I really expected it to, to wick through or absorb through the Under Armour really fast and pretty slow on the minus 33. Not real sure exactly how that relates to your sweat, but I mean, I'm guessing that if those water beads were perspiration, that they would behave in a similar way. But let's go to number three. Boy, wringing out clothes back in the day was hard. I respect the women big time from back then. <laughs> or whoever was doing it. I respect the men and women from back then that was doing it. Those things retain moisture like crazy. I shook them both out, wrung them both out. I tried to get them equally as dry as I could. So now we're gonna let them hang here. We're gonna try to see which one will dry faster. All right guys, well that last test took way longer than expected. It actually took like about 24 hours for both garments to dry. The Under Armour definitely dried a little quicker than the Merino wool, which is what I expected. Synthetics just typically dry faster than Merino wool. So if you ever do get them wet, synthetics are gonna take the edge on getting dry first. But before I started all these tests, kind of the general gist of Merino wool versus synthetics was, the merino wool would be more odor resistant. It would be warmer when wet because when merino wool actually contacts moisture, it produces a heating effect like a chemical reaction. If you get it too wet though, that doesn't work. The downsides of merino wool was that, of course, it takes longer to dry. It also doesn't wick as well from what everybody says. Synthetic will wick better. At least that's popular opinion. Uh, I've heard on both sides equally that one's warmer than the other. Overall, what I've learned through these tests and through hearing from all the people and from just wearing both products myself is that it's kind of like the Chevy and Ford debate. Some people like one, some people like the other. I would suggest trying both. I like Merino wool. It's what I'm gonna wear 90% of the time, mainly because it's way more comfortable and it's way more odor resistant and way easier to wash and I just like it better. I think it's warmer, that's my gut feeling. But you, I really couldn't tell a huge difference between the two. If I was gonna go to some extreme conditions where I was gonna be getting really hot, my heart rate really high, and then sitting in really cold weather, I'd probably look for a high grade synthetic. I just feel like in my gut that that would do better. I would definitely get synthetic without fleecing it because as we've seen in the Under Armour, it took forever for the water to come through there, for the water to go through the fabric. It went through the merino wool way faster than it did the fleece part of the Under Armour. So I would probably look into getting one that was just straight synthetic with no. 
kind of fleece in it whatsoever. But I don't know that for a fact because I've never experimented with it. I've hunted in both these garments in extreme conditions and I feel like they both performed really well. I think in the merino wool category, Minus 33 is an absolutely great product. Uh, you can check them out down below in the description if you're interested. I'll leave a link to their website and to the actual products that I wear. I also did a more detailed review of the Minus 33 top and bottom. If you want to check that out, I'll leave that down in the description as well. But hey, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure and subscribe down below if you hadn't already. Smash that like button if that's something that you're into. And I love each and every single one of you. And Lord willing, we'll catch you next time right here on Chasing Green.